Good morning. Our text this morning begins in Mark chapter 5. We'll begin in verse 21. Mark 5, 21. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And the great crowd followed him and thronged about him. There was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing against you. Yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Now, while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside, and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. And taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Let us pray. Righteous Father, we thank you for the word that you have preserved for us about these miracles that your son Jesus performed during his time on earth. We pray, Father, likewise for healing and for faith. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So our text this morning is about two miracles. First, you've got the story of Jairus' daughter. That's the, the main framework for this whole thing. And then nestled inside of that story, you've got another story about a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years. And these stories teach us some fundamental gospel lessons. All right, I'm not going to hit you with anything difficult or complex today. Just some real basic gospel. Both of these miracles demonstrate Jesus' power of life over death, and they both show the necessity of faith. The story starts when Jesus returns from the land of the Gerasenes. You remember that he was across the sea in the land of the Gentiles as we were reading last week. And he has just returned from that trip. And just as soon as Jesus gets off the boat, back on his side of the sea, he's approached by a great crowd and specifically by 
the ruler of the synagogue, a man named Jairus. And Jairus falls down at Jesus' feet and begs him to come and heal his sick daughter. He says, come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And as Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house, he passes through this great crowd that's gathered around him. And a woman in the crowd who's been afflicted for 12 years sees him and thinks to herself, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. Both Jairus and the woman are concerned with wellness, at least as far as our English translations are concerned. If Jesus lays his hands on Jairus' daughter, she'll be made well. That's what Jairus says. If the woman can just touch Jesus' garments, she will be made well. That's what she says to herself. Our translations here, the, the word well, I think obscures a little bit of their meaning, though. Because they both use the same word. I mean, the, the, what, the, the good thing that the ESV has done for us is it's preserved that both Jairus and the woman are thinking along the same lines of the same thing. And our ESV at least uses the same words, again, in both of their statements. Because that reflects what Mark tells us in Greek. They both use the same word, sozo. But it doesn't just mean to be made well. In their case, it means to be saved. The word sozo means to save. And it tells us something, first off, it tells us something about the situations that both of these people are in. All right, sometimes, it, whenever we hear uh, someone's not doing well and they want to be made well, I don't know, that, just, that doesn't sound all that serious. Right? Like, I've, I'm unwell when I've got a sniffle. Right? I'm unwell when I've not slept enough. It's really easy to make me unwell. And those kinds of unwellnesses are relatively easy to turn around and make well again. Right? Sometimes all I need is a glass of water or a good night's sleep. That's not what's going on here. Jairus, he's not coming to Jesus with, my daughter has a little sniffle. Can you please tap her on the nose so she won't be boogery? Jairus is asking Jesus, come and lay your hands on her so that she may be saved and live. Jairus knows his daughter is in a dire state. And what he's asking about is a matter of life and death. Put your hands on her so that she may be saved and live. And this woman, who has become destitute because of her affliction, and Mark tells us she's just getting worse and worse. All right? So not only is she, is she unwell, but she's impoverished herself over this sickness. Right? She's at the end of her rope, and her sickness continues getting worse. All right? There's... There's only so much you can bleed, folks. And this woman thinks to herself, if I touch even his garments, I will be saved. It is likewise for her a matter of life and death. Today's text is about Jesus' power to save. His power to give us life in the face of death. He gives it to this woman who is facing eventual death due to her condition. And he even gives it to this young girl who has tasted death for a brief while. The good news of Jesus Christ is that he can save us so that we may live. Even in the face of our inevitable death, he can save us. In fact, the great message of the resurrection is that even those who have died will live again. The other part of this gospel message 
is that we must simply have faith. That is what is required. Faith. Jesus turns and asks whenever the woman touches him. He turns and asks, who touched me? And the disciples think he's being ridiculous. But what he's doing is he's making the woman that he has just healed own her faith. She doesn't touch him and sneak off, never to be heard from again. She is healed, and then he confronts her about her healing. And when she confesses that it was she who touched him, he tells her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And of course, we recognize what a, what a loaded and full term peace is. Shalom. And it's not just quit being sick. It's you will be well now in the fullest sense. Be at peace, Jesus says. And it comes to her because of faith. When others come from Jairus' house to report that Jairus' daughter has died and that they should not bother the rabbi anymore, Jesus tells Jairus, notice, notice there's, there's a lot of the same thing going on here. The woman had come to Jesus in fear and trembling. And Jesus calms her, tells her her faith has made her well. And now this report has come to Jairus. Your daughter has passed. It's news that I cannot imagine receiving. And Jesus says exactly what he needs to to Jairus. He doesn't just say, have faith. He doesn't just say, only believe. He says, first off, do not fear. But he lays the same call on Jairus that he had given to the woman with the flow of blood. Only believe. Salvation begins with faith in Jesus Christ. But this is living faith that we are looking at. We should say, we should point this out. This is no dead faith, right? To, to use James's terminology from James 2. Jairus comes to Jesus to begin with, and he continues to follow Jesus even after his daughter is declared dead. And this woman, she doesn't just think to herself, oh, Jesus can save me, right? And so she has some warm thoughts, and all of a sudden she's healed. That's not how it happens. She goes to him in the crowd pressing her way through to get close to the teacher and touches him. The gospel teaches us that salvation comes by faith and it teaches us what faith is. Again, not just bare belief, but fruitful, living faith that we see coming from Jairus, that we see coming from the woman with the flow of blood. And so as we do each Lord's Day, we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and we issue the gospel call. The good news is that Jesus can save us from sin and death. Where we face death, Jesus can give us life. What Jesus asks of us is that we have faith. And we invite you to that faith, to believe in the Lord's salvation, to turn away from sin. All right? Faith includes that as well. Repentance. We invite you to confess Jesus as Lord and to be baptized into His death, burial, and resurrection for the remission of your sins. That is included in faith as well. That is the faith we proclaim this morning. Follow Him all the days of your life, for that too is faith. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, He will save you. 
If you're subject to the invitation, won't you come forward as together we stand and sing?